Hello, my name is Yune Jo as a research professor at UN Renewable Energy Research Centers of Iwa Women's University. I will talk about the measurement principle and applications of IPCE. First of all, IPCE is same as the QE. The lipids, uh, it refers to the efficiency of converted electron compared to the instant photon. Formulas are also expressed with the same definition. There are two QE, the EQE and IQE. The EQE is the generated electron compared to the incident photon. However, internal QE is generated electron uh, related, uh, related to absorbed photon. Uh, the, in the internal QE, we should consider the reflectance and transmittance. So, the two types of QEs are a little different. Uh, it differs from the material properties and the structures of the device surface. And the graph below is the data taken from a place called QB education. And you can compare the reflectivity IQE and EQE data in, from this one. So IQE is always greater than the EQE value. Since the generated electrons can be known from the generated current, let's take a look at the generation current. First of all, when the light of electrons energy greater than the band gap energy of the absorbed layer is late, uh, radiation. There is the maximum current density. Uh, however, photocurrent is considered by optical loss and electrical loss. The photocurrent can be expressed mathematically with the generation rate and correction function. And generation rate is the it's shown the formula. It composed the absorption and absorption coefficient and the incident decay. So the function is depends on the wavelengths and dielectric defect. Uh, dialysis depths of incident light. As you know, where uh, the we use the solar spectrum with the uh, depending on the wavelengths. And next, the this figure show the generation rate. The G value is the uh, generation rate uh, depending on the depths. Uh, in case of the silicon solar cell, uh, data was shown that it can be seen that there is an exponential decrease in the depth direction. If you look closer, you can see the longer wavelengths, longer wavelengths like the infrared, the deeper it goes. For reference, the generation rate is mainly mentioned in study related to light absorption and focusing. As shown in the figures on the light, it is the result of studying how light is focused on the surface and how it affects the collection of carriers when the carrier have spatial distributions by the nanostructure as surface. It's shown, uh, it is my own uh, paper at 2015. To introduce more basic information about the absorption of the light, 
um, you can see the bill number flow and this formula. When light is irradiated on the material, it's absorbed and penetrated by, uh, by this formula. According to this law, the absorption coefficients of according to the absorption coefficients of material and depth penetration depth is also defined as the inverse of the absorption coefficient. If you look at the graph on the light, you can see the absorption coefficients of several uh, interesting materials, for example, CIGS, silicon, and perovskite. Uh, you can see that the absorption of the CIGS and absorption coefficient of CIGS and perovskite is much higher than that of the silicon, uh, crystal and silicon in the visible range. Therefore, if you calculate the uh, penetration depth, and uh, in case of CIGS and perhaps height, uh, they have a 0 0.1 micrometer penetration depth. However, the crystalline, in case of crystalline silicon, uh, it's need to the from 10 to 1, Hundred micrometer thick to reduce the uh, to minimize the transmission loss. In fact, the silicon solar cells had uh, have to the over five micro five hundred micrometer thick uh, substrate, uh, and the and then. It is a very important example. Uh, the thin film solar cell have significant advantages in terms of material cost. Next, these are factors we can calculate uh, when we are measuring the QE. The measured QE is multiplied by the solar spectrum and the these are integrations uh, show the JSC, short circuit current. And then we can obtain the band gap energy by these formulas of QE measurement. These data are the results of our labs uh, solar cell device. And in case of the multi layer device, such as solar cell, the absorption and charge loss are very complicated for each layer before a current photo current is obtained. To improve device efficiency, it is very important to check which part, which type of loss there is in each layer and this uh, and by the QE measurement, we can estimate the, uh, which parts occur the uh, loss in the whole uh, device. You can see is uh, this area show, this area show the loss from the each layer, the CDS and TCO, and, and so on. So you can check that the parts of loss and how much of loss as shown in the figures C. And next figure on uh, figure B, you can see the IQE loss by changing the TCO thickness of valuation, thickness, the valuation. In, in this case, the light absorbed from the surface will be an indicator to see how much photocurrent is absorbed by the TCO layers according to the thickness. 
finally, by applying a voltage bias in QE measurement, information about the carrier transport can be obtained in this part. First of all, carrier correction length is composed by diffusion length and depletion width. When we uh, apply the bias, the depletion width changes. So if QV changes a lot when we apply the bias, it can be thought that the overall, overall correction width, overall correction width is mainly affected by the depletion reason, depletion width. Uh, for example, before in the measurement uh, example, for more defect part, it can be expected that carrier transport depends on the depletion width. And finally, uh, it diffuse, its diffusions become uh, difficult. And this page is an overview of our equipment and actual photo about the IQE measurement. It's over. Thank you for your kind attention.